Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, the only place you need to come to find out more about buying, owning and getting the most from your motor caravan. On this week's show we take a look at the exciting reboot of Sun Living. Diamond Dave reveals the tools you need for tinkering with your motorhome, plus we set our sat-navs for Dorset to check out Wood Farm Touring Park. Now, as everybody knows, Sun Living is an affordable range of motorhomes produced by Adria in Slovenia. It's very eye-catching for a number of reasons, because for 2018, out goes the old yellow and black branding in favour of blue and grey, all part of a reboot that the mother brand has probably decided it was ripe for. So the offering is now split into three particular segments. We have V for vans, S for low profile, and A for overcabs. So we're gonna take a look at one of the S series vans in the shape of the S70 SL, which has a transverse rear mounted bed and a drop down bed above the lounge. Now look at these brilliant white side walls, the new typography, the gray and the blue colorways, all of which will help the new Sun Living stand out in the marketplace. But there's more. Open the habitation door to reveal this rather smart panel with a couple of hooks and storage down there. Now I'm starting to feel that this van isn't built down to a price and that feeling certainly carries on inside. Now, to my eyes, this doesn't look particularly budget or entry level at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. It could have come out of something far more expensive. Now, another little prong to the attack for Sun Living in 2018 is appealing to the rental market. And that is why they have chosen this kind of soft furnishing scheme inside. You see, grey and turquoise match the colours on the side of the van, and they also feel pleasingly durable too. So they'll certainly stand up to a lot of wear and tear. And just look at these overhead lockers. No more pesky positive catches. No, you just stick your hand in, up it goes. And to close it, straight back down with a bit of resistance. I can see that system taking years of punishment. But it's not just about durability. There's plenty of finesse to go with it too. Check out this light. On it goes. It's something out of Adria's more expensive ranges and it's very reassuring to see it in the new Sun Living. And in fact, it's a lot of fun too. You can do that for hours. Plus, on the lounge table down here, you can extend it easily into the offside position for the people sitting in the sofas by means of a clever articulated system. Just pull out and it snaps into position. Now the fabric panel on the inside of the habitation door is referenced here in the overcab. It provides the lining for those overcab storage pockets and it's also a handy backstop under the sunlight. Now the S70 SP's nearside kitchen is certainly on the compact side. It's the kind of thing you could expect to find in a camper van. Having said that though, you still get three gas burners in a line, so two can't go hiding behind the pair in front, and a square sink. Now below the square sink is a very pleasing touch indeed. A main socket mounted through 90 degrees, so there won't be any cable foul. And underneath that, two drawers, using the same system that you stick your hand into and also amazing at this price point they're actually soft closing now underneath here under the gas burners you'll find a combination oven and grill all pretty good for versatile cooks on the move there's no obvious place to put a microwave oven though so you may just have to get used to the relative charms of gas instead now the final piece in the kitchen jigsaw is the Duriger skinny fridge here on the near side and that's opposite a rather large wardrobe space. Look at all that, plenty of place to stick all your finery. Now behind that, another great innovation in this van. What's this void you're thinking? Hang on, has this van actually got a washroom? Answer, yes it does. And it's behind this sliding timber door. Now the great advantage to this kind of execution is that when the washroom is not in use, you have a clear, unobstructed sight line to the rear of the motorhome, making it feel much bigger than it really is. When you want to use the washroom, you just step inside, pull the door around, and the space inside, although compact, still gives you a wash basin, a shower, and a loo. Plus, you get the benefit of the roof light flooding the area in natural light. 
Now the S70 SP has a rear fixed bed and to save space on the body length, which is just under seven meters, it is of the transverse variety. It has a handy split lengthways too, so you can lift up this section and load items into the void underneath. Now talking about storage, there are three overhead lockers on the rear wall of the van, another storage cupboard here with a load of shelves in and actually under this space, a wardrobe with a hanging rail. Now the back of the wardrobe doesn't in fact have a back, it has a curtain and this allows you to load items into the spacious rear garage. Now selected models in the new Sun Living Low Profile Collection have drop down double beds above the lounge and that includes the S70 SP. To deploy the bed it's quite simple, you just remove the headrests from the lounge seats, drop the cushions on the side sofa and then engage in some fairly light lifting. Access to the bed is by means of a ladder that stores in the rear garage. It really couldn't be any easier. The Sun Living S70 SP is based on the Fiat Ducato on a 3,500 kilogram chassis, so anyone can drive it on a standard car license. The user payload is 577 kilograms, so there's plenty of accommodation for all your touring essentials. Now the on the road price is just under 50,000 pounds. Some people would say that's a lot of money for an entry level van. I say, think about it this way. This is a fantastic entree to Adria's legendary build quality at a lower price and from what we've seen on this van, what's on the inside and the outside is certainly very impressive. Hello and welcome to Diamond Dave's workshop. Today I'm going to talk about tools. Now there's no point carrying all of the workshop with you. A, you probably haven't got the payload for it and B, you probably don't need everything. But it is useful to have a few tools on board. I carry this kit, which is some screwdrivers, snips, pliers, a torch, nice and useful tool, magnetic base on that so if you're working underneath a vehicle that would stick to the chassis. A good heavy duty tyre compressor. This will inflate a motorhome tyre from nothing to 80 psi in about 10 minutes. A lot of the cheap ones won't this is not a cheap one, this is a twin cylinder unit. It's a good powerful unit and it'll do the job well. So it's worth having. Tool kit over here gives me the basic sockets that I need for most jobs, spanners, screwdrivers, a sharp knife, grips, to tackle most jobs that I'm likely to come across. And a digital multimeter. Now that's a really useful tool if you know how to use it. That can help identify a blown fuse, a broken wire, a burnt out bulb. So let's have a look how we can use that. Just clear these bits out of the way. And I've got a little demonstration board here to show a few faults and how we can use a multimeter to find them and cure them. So first thing we need is a power source. So there's our battery. So if I now connect to the battery, that gives us some power, and if I switch on, oh, it's not working. What's going wrong? Right, we turn to our trusty voltmeter, digital multimeter. Most meters will have a selection of connections for the test leads. Com is common, so the negative, the black lead goes on there. We want to measure, we want to measure volts, so the red lead goes in the one marked V. On the scale here, we've got several settings. The first one is V, volts, with a straight line and dashes underneath it. That indicates DC, direct current. That's what we get from batteries, that's what we need to be measuring. So if we switch that to V, volts. Now the first test we need to do is the battery. Have we got power in the battery? Not very much. We've got 9.6 volts. So that battery's pretty much dead. So let's get rid of that and get a decent battery on the job. Now before I connect it, I'm going to check this one, make sure it's got charge in it. Positive, red to the positive, black to the negative. We've got 12.8 volts, so that's fine. This will do the job for us. So we'll connect up. 
we've now got power. Oh, the light still doesn't work. We've got another fault somewhere. So now we use our meter to test. So we've established we've got battery power, 12.8, that's fine. Now when you're testing circuits, make sure that the negative lead has got a good earth. There could be more than one fault here. It could be a blown fuse. We'll check that here. 12.8, so we've got power to the fuse. 12.8, we've got power to the other side of the fuse, so the fuse is intact. If you're checking a fuse, don't just look at it. It can look perfectly good, but it can still be open circuit, especially a small fuse like this at three amps. The wire inside is like a hair, it's so fine. So when you're checking a fuse, test it with the meter. Now we do that by switching to ohms resistance. And just to make sure the meter's working properly, if we touch the two prongs together, we read zero. If we separate them, we get OL for open circuit. So we put the prongs of the meter across the fuse, we get a reading of zero. So that fuse is good. We can now put that back in circuit. We know that's okay. And the light still doesn't work. So we've still got a fault. What else could it be? Well, it could be the switch. So going back to our volt scale, and again, putting the negative of the test meter onto the battery, we can come around the back and we can test at the switch. And we've got voltage at the switch. And we've got some voltage out of the switch. So the switch is okay. We've got a broken wire. So we've got a wire that has come off the switch. So if I just hold that on, and it still doesn't work, but I've just discovered this. The negative from the bulb has come adrift. It's no longer connected to the negative of the battery. So if I reconnect that and reconnect the switch, we now work. It's a logical sequence of investigation needed to solve the faults. First off, make sure that your battery is working. The meter will tell you. You can check bulbs, you can check fuses. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, but you just need to know what you're looking at and how to use the kit. Hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Adria's low profile coral range has been hugely popular for many a year, and in 2018, it continues to offer the style and value that buyers have come to expect. There have been a raft of changes to the lineup, however, most notably the fact that it's now available in three specification lines. Working from the bottom, they're Access, Plus and Supreme. The van behind me is the Coral 670 SLT, and you can tell that it's a Supreme model, in other words, the top of the range, because it features this attractive all-silver body. This new area over the cab is just one of the new features for 2018. It looks much more stylish than before, and there's a double panoramic window. As well as that, this year all corals get a 600mm wide entrance door. However, it's inside that you're going to be spending most of your time, so let's take a look. This model may be 7.38 metres in length, but Adria has managed to squeeze in a pretty good sized lounge. These two roof lights up above make a huge difference as well. They really flood the area with light, making it a fantastic place to sit and relax of an evening. Both of the cab seats swivel too. Talking of the cab, this is pretty standard Ducato fare. There's automotive smart styling, and there's also cup holders which can double up as somewhere to store your tablet when it's charging. There are USB slots above as well. What's not standard is the automatic gearbox which is featured here. With the cab seat swivelled, five people can sit here in absolute comfort. What's more, the table moves backwards and forwards on its single leg to allow them all to dine in comfort too. However, the person with the shortest legs will probably want to sit on this side sofa. Because of all the seats here, this is the one with the narrowest seat cushions. It's great to see that there's no step out of the lounge in this motorhome. There's a completely flat floor throughout the whole thing. Once you do get up and walk backwards, you'll pass this fancy control panel, which is one of the smartest I've ever seen. All of the motorhome systems, lighting, water, can be controlled from this one point. And beneath is the panel for controlling the Aldi heating system. 
kitchen is located in the center of the motorhome and it's finished in this symphony white color scheme. Now it looks smart and very modern, but it might find it's a bit difficult to keep clean and tidy. Also in the kitchen is this Dometic hob. There are three burners in a line, a combined Thetford oven and grill unit, and this deep sink. I love this cover on the sink. You can take it apart for easy storage when it's not in use. Across the corridor is this Thetford fridge with a separate freezer compartment. It's amply sized for a full berth motorhome. The two main berths in this motorhome feature towards the rear. This layout is the bang on trend fixed single bed rear washroom. It's very popular at the moment and this is a really good example of it. The beds are good length, they're nice and wide and the mattresses are nicely deep and comfortable. The heads will raise up too to allow you to sit up in bed. There's USB ports at the end of each bed, which is a great addition. We're pleased to see that manufacturers are starting to fit these as standard. So there's plenty of storage space available up above, and you'll also find a really good sized roof light, which makes the area feel nice and bright. Check out the storage capabilities in this rear washroom. This wardrobe is enormous. It's got a hanging rail, it's half height, should be plenty big enough for all your clothing. Elsewhere, there's a swivel electric flush set for toilet a reasonable size cupboard underneath for all your bits and bobs and quite a deep sink. There's also a further storage cupboard up top and a couple of hooks for hanging your towels. The shower is on the near side of the motorhome. There's no roof light but it's still quite a bright place to be. There's now the heating radiator so you're sure to stay warm and toasty during the winter months. Down on the floor there's only one plug hole so you'll need to make sure that your motorhome is nice and level. Coral is an iconic name in motor caravanning, so it's great to see that the brand continues to offer popular floor plans such as this for the 2018 season. Now this motorhome costs £64,425, so it's not cheap, but what that does get you is a well-built, well-specified van which is sure to make you the envy of everybody at the next campsite that you visit. Stay a while in delightful Dorset, the sign says, and when you turn the corner and have scenes like this to greet you, it's hard to refuse. Wood Farm Camping and Caravan Park is set in the stunning rolling hills of the Char Valley in Dorset. Just three quarters of a mile from the Jurassic Coast and a short drive from the towns of Dorchester and Axminster. As a family have been here for 45 years now and uh, one of the main reasons people come to stay with us is our proximity to the Jurassic Coast. Um, we're about three quarters of a mile to Charmouth Beach and there's the Heritage Coast Centre, Charmouth Heritage Coast Centre, right down at the beach with lots of information about how to go fossiling. Um, we're right on the southwest coast path, lots of people come here for walking. Um, so I think it's the, our setting and where we are that attract people to come to stay with us. And that setting is truly beautiful. Even within the park they have their own set of lakes to walk around or even fish. Although the owners admit the fish are pretty wily these days and it may not suit any serious fishermen out there. There are 200 touring pitches at Wood Farm, all of which are hard standings, with awning space and electricity, plus the usual mix of premium and standard, offering grey waste disposal and individual water points. For motorhomes, there's a drive over grey water point and a discreet Elsan point just behind it. But beyond the necessities, it's the luxuries that brought this park into our Top 100 Sites Awards. There's an on-site cafeteria offering lunches, afternoon teas and all-day breakfasts. Plus legendary homemade cakes baked by the lovely Gay. And if you need to burn off some of those extra calories, there's a large outdoor play area for the children. A tennis court with racket and ball hire and even an indoor heated swimming pool. It's like a lot bigger than I expected it to be and it's a lot bigger and I really like how they've managed to put the trampoline in there and I like the well, pirate ship 
newspapers in the background and it's like it's just really good and it's like you can if you I don't think you can get bored here. Well, neither do we, because in addition to the outside play area, there's the lighthouse room, an indoor play area with a whole range of ideas to keep the children entertained. Facilities are clean and well kept and include two laundry rooms with washer dryer and ironing facilities, a disabled toilet and shower room. And if you fancy a soak, there's even a good sized family bathroom with a real bath in it. Oh, I just think just it's so lovely. You know, the views and usually the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what's very nice is that the, the staff are so friendly and helpful. And expert. You, yeah, which you don't always get from some campsites. Yeah, and um, it has the right combination of qualities for what we look at in the site. And one of the quite important ones is the swimming, which you see behind you there. So yeah. We, we both enjoy swimming, and you can't always get a camp. Um, park that's as good as this with swimming it's also as good as this you know. especially indoors there's a dedicated dog walking area for those of you who can't be separated from your pooch and always popular with the children are the three little pigs that live on the top field we have a lot of motor caravans staying with us and they as you say often want to uh, park up for the couple of days and then not have to move the motor caravan. We've got a bus stop just outside the park entrance and you can get a bus from there all the way along the, the coastline or to some of the other towns like Dorchester and Axminster. So we've got a good local bus service. One word of warning though, beautiful undulating scenery means hills and people using wheelchairs or sticks may find the park tricky to get around. We would absolutely recommend it because it is beautiful and it's well worth wherever you have to come from to visit, it really is. It's just different, there's not many places like this. Now we love motor caravans more than most people, but sadly that's all we've got time for on this week's show. We'll be back soon taking a look at a dinky coach built from Eldis and Dave gets up close and personal with the controls of a Truma heating system. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via our website, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, tour safe and take care.